Okay, everyone, welcome. Uh, I think uh, everybody's here or um, we're gonna at least get started for now and anybody that's lingering can kind of sign in and we'll catch up. Uh, welcome everyone, I'm Dr. Jess Sally with Regenex Pittsburgh, your local Pittsburgh uh, non-operative orthopedic and regenerative specialist. Uh, today, I'm gonna give you guys a little talk on how we're using your body's own cells, including platelets and stem cells to avoid more invasive orth orthopedic surgeries uh, and treat musculoskeletal injury. So stay tuned um, through the uh, talk here. At the end of the presentation, I'm gonna be announcing to you how you can receive a special promotion that we're doing this month. Uh, you have the chance to receive a free Regenex supplement package and up to $1,000 off a Regenex stem cell procedure. If you stay and listen to the whole thing, I'll give you the uh, details at the end. So who am I? Uh, I'm Dr. Jess Sally. Uh, like I said, I'm one of the uh, associates at Regenex Pittsburgh. Um, I did my undergraduate education in human nutrition, foods, and exercise at Virginia Tech, and then went on to my uh, osteopathic uh, education at the Edward Vi Virginia College of Osteopathic Medicine. My primary specialty is physical medicine and rehab, uh, PM&R. My secondary specialty is musculoskeletal sports and spine uh, sports medicine. And I did my fellowship and residency both at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. I'm an avid snowboarder and also enjoy cycling. So this is our uh, team of docs, myself on the far right and uh, Dr. Lieber in the middle, Dr. Adelsheimer on the far left. Uh, we're all board certified physicians. We have five different locations around the Pittsburgh area. Our primary uh, location being in uh, Fox Chapel, which is our Pittsburgh location and several satellite offices that we can see people from all over the greater Pittsburgh area. One thing of note with all of our offices, we are a COVID-19 max protection safety zone. Uh, we have all of the measures in place to help keep our patients safe, keep our environment clean. Uh, all of the doctors uh, are checked regularly um, and uh, we make sure that you're coming into a, a place where you can not have to worry about COVID-19 uh, also, we've never had a case or instance of COVID-19 uh, in or from our office setting. So all of you are here for different reasons. Uh, there are multiple reasons why you may be listening tonight uh, to hear me talk about particularly regenerative medicine and also maybe uh, some additional topics on shoulder related uh, treatment. So you're here basically for reasons like reducing pain or avoiding surgery. Uh, patients also seek out additional treatments because they don't want to have the downtime uh, for more invasive surgeries, or maybe they're just not a surgical candidate for health or age-related reasons. Uh, so you want to talk about some different options for care. Um, maybe you don't want to have to rely on medications, whether it's pain medications or uh, long-term anti-inflammatories or anything like that. You don't want to just be told that you have to, quote, learn to live with it, end quote. And maybe you're not ready to just slow down and you want more from your life and more from your function. So today I'm going to give a little overview on what Regenex is uh, as a product and as a procedure, really. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the current options in terms of orthopedic care today. I'm going to talk a little bit about interventional orthopedics and how that applies to us. Uh, we'll talk about how Regenex is different from a lot of the other treatments out there. We'll talk about who it's for and then what kind of results we can expect from the procedures. So really, I think the first thing to note is that most of the future of medicine, uh, especially musculoskeletal uh, and orthopedic medicine is mostly biologic. The focus now is shifting from management and surgery to repair, particularly using the resources of your own body to help heal itself. So if we look at the natural healing process, uh, and all of you can relate to this, I think pretty much if you've ever suffered a, a scrape or a cut, uh, really what ends up happening is you have an injury maybe to the superficial surface of the skin. Uh, and what happens after you get cut? You form a clot, right? So the clot starts to form over top of the injury and underneath that clot, uh, there are, there's inflammation that forms. So it gets red, it gets swollen maybe, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets hot to touch. Um, and basically what's happening is there's factors that are being released into that cut that are stimulating stem cells and platelets and other things like the immune response 
to help start the process of tissue regeneration, tissue remodeling, and then eventually coming to complete healing of the tissue. So when we're looking at joints, uh, things like normal cartilage metabolism, it's a regulated balance. And it's a, it's a balancing act between the buildup and the breakdown processes within the body. So when you start to have degeneration or arthritic related changes, it's really when the breakdown starts to outweigh the buildup. Uh, and here in this graph, you can see uh, sort of the seesaw effect of breakdown products uh, that get stuck in the joint, maybe whether that's after an injury or just progressive over time with aging. And that starts to become more prom uh, prominent in the joint than the other products that help with uh, the buildup or the repair of the joint itself. So that balance gets thrown off. So with regenerative treatments, there are a couple different things that we talk about. We can talk about stem cells. We can talk about platelet-rich plasma, which may be referred to as PRP, as you may have heard it referred to in the community. Uh, another product called platelet lysate, uh, and then uh, prolotherapy, which has been around for the better part of the last century in terms of regenerative treatment. So platelets are a very common regenerative uh, treatment modality uh, that you may hear about in other orthopedic offices or other places around uh, basically, platelets are your, your fundamental uh, healing factor in the body. They're found in the blood. They contain healing and growth factors. They help to kind of speed up the repair of tissue. They also help with uh, uh, guiding signals for things like stem cells and the immune response and all of these other things. They also contain something called serotonin, which actually helps to calm pain. So once... Um, platelets start to do their work, pain can actually start to calm down pretty quickly from those initial injuries. They also attract stem cells and activate them to do the work that they're supposed to do in terms of tissue repair. So there's different types of platelet procedures. Like I said, the first procedure you may have heard of is something called PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Um, what that is, is it's basically used in uh, more, uh, I apologize for the slide here. That's used more in like joints, tendons, ligaments, and it can actually help with concentration to help uh, actually release the growth factors more slowly. Uh, there's also something called platelet lysate, which is used more in spinal procedures, things like epidural injections, where we actually break those platelets open and they can be used to treat more ner uh, nerve radiculopathy, uh, nerve entrapments, and the growth factors are released more immediately. Uh, so they're more immediately available. So, here at Regenex Pittsburgh, we're discussing uh, more strictly adult uh, stem cells. We're not using things like embryonic stem cells. And everything that we use in terms of stem cell product or platelet product is all autologous, which means it basically comes all from you. Uh, we're using mesenchymal stem cells, which are bone marrow derived cells or adipose derived cells. And you may hear that used in the community uh, in both ways. But our process is actually used both uh, from both the bone marrow and the uh, fat derived cells. So what is an adult stem cell? A stem cell is basically an undifferentiated cell. Uh, it's just a cell that doesn't really have a job that it's supposed to do yet. Uh, it's held in reserve in the body, in the bone marrow until some type of repair or signaling response is needed. It can turn into many different types of cells. Uh, and it can orchestrate re a repair response. Uh, stem cells are self-renewing, so when you take them out, uh, they actually do regenerate more cells, uh, and they also will regenerate upon each other when they activate within a joint. They can also provide new blood supplies, which is important in terms of healing because that is what provides the roadways to get good stuff in and bad stuff out. Like I said before, you want to maintain that balance between breakdown and buildup. So stem cells are basically new biological tools that are available to treat musculoskeletal injury and degeneration. These are the new biological tools that we're sort of transitioning to uh, in terms of replacing more conservative treatments or replacing more invasive surgeries with the actual healing response that's going to help to grow new tissues such as ligament, tendon, bone, cartilage, or repair damaged tissue um, where they have rotator cuff tears or... Uh, uh, tendinitis or any other things that may create uh, pain as well. They also try to speed up the healing process. And these 
specialized cellular processing methods that we're using today, particularly at Regenex, help to yield more concentrated uh, amounts of these stem cells or platelets. And that in turn helps to produce more powerful samples. So Regenex itself is actually an orthopedic surgery and pain treatment alternative. And we'll talk about how that fits into, you know, your typical care patterns. Uh, it's basically what we consider interventional orthopedics. Uh, we're replacing more invasive surgeries with more needle guided procedures uh, to try to treat the same problems. Uh, we're using orthobiologics, which basically means we're using cells or cell related products uh, to help with tissue repair. It's advanced regenerative medicine and a trusted alternative to orthopedic surgery. So basically the, what we're doing at Regenex is we're taking these stem cell treatments and we're sort of elevating them to a, a next level. And there's multiple ways that we do that. There's uh, ways in terms of the quality and the potency of the products. Like I said, we're using more concentrated forms of these stem cells uh, for more powerful samples. Uh, we're getting a better quality of stem cell from the draws that we actually do from the bone marrow. Uh, we're introducing the stem cells into what we call a positive milieu, meaning that we're actually introducing the cells into the body in a way where they're going to be stimulated and can actually do the job that they're supposed to do. Uh, we're specifically targeting um, very specific areas using Im image guidance, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we're using uh, different types of stimulants and adjuvants for uh, helping growth of these stem cells, ongoing stimulation with continued strengthening and range of motion and everything like that, uh, customization of product to the injury specific to the patient. So everybody's like a snowflake. So we're going to treat different uh, issues and different um, presentations for people in different ways. Uh, we're avoiding anything that's going to harm our stem cell growth. So we're looking at things like medications, um, you know, uh, all of these other things that may come on your physical exam and, and just in terms of your general medical presentation that may slow the growth of the stem cells or inhibit it. And we're going to follow every patient's outcome. So we're looking very detailed into the patient's health, the patient's uh, uh, process, um, how we actually administer these cells, and then what comes after that to make sure that we're doing the best that we can for all of our patients. So within the terms of just Regenex treatments, uh, about 80% of what we do uh, involves PRP or platelet-based treatments. Uh, there's also the 20% of uh, things that we see that usually require a stem cell treatment. Uh, between the two, there's a significant cost difference, but not everybody needs stem cells. Just because they're there doesn't always mean that that's the best treatment. Uh, so we look at that uh, in terms of everybody's presentation and everybody's different um, treatments, and we try to give you the treatment that's going to be the best to give you the best outcome. Different conditions that we treat, arthritis, tendonitis, um, any types of torn ligaments or meniscal tears, uh, spine related, related pain, disc related pain in the spine or uh, nerve related damage that may come from those disc issues and also bone damage that may come from long term arthritis and other uh, conditions that may cause uh, bone degradation directly. Common treatment areas for stem cells. Uh, Basically, all of the same areas that you would normally see treated at your neighborhood orthopedic office, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, hips, knees, ankle, spine. Basically, I tell everybody that we usually treat everything from the base of the skull uh, down to the tip of the toes. Today, we're going to talk a little bit of just about shoulder treatment and different things that we're using to treat uh, more common shoulder related pain. Uh, current conditions, current options sort of in your basic orthopedic care. When you go either to your typical orthopedic office or just your PCP's office and you say, hey, my knee or my shoulder hurts, one of the uh, things that you might see happen first is they'll recommend something like over-the-counter medications, things like anti-inflammatories or Tylenol. Uh, some things, if it's been a little long-term, uh, may even be presented with opioid-type medications. There's other non-surgical treatments, things like corticosteroid injections, um, hyalgan, or what is considered hyaluronic acid. Most people call that the, quote, rooster, co rooster crow, uh, comb shots. Uh, there's also, you know, ways to uh, alter the nerves or bracing or other chiropractic physical therapy treatment, things like that. 
things that aren't surgical, but maybe more just like band-aid treatments. Uh, and then there's more surgery, uh, actual replacement, removal, uh, repair, and that obviously comes with uh, additional risk. So basically what Regenex is trying to do is create a different option uh, with injection-based, non-surgical, regenerative, uh, renewal-based treatments somewhere between those other non-surgical, uh, more Band-Aid-like injection treatment options or more invasive surgery. So the idea is to let the body heal itself. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at situations where surgical orthopedics may not be the dominant form of care moving forward in the 21st century. What they're seeing in the research is that 95% of meniscus surgeries just actually remove the meniscus that's in the joint. We need that to create the cushion. So if it gets removed, then you don't have any more cushion in between that joint. Research now shows that removing that meniscus tissue might just actually speed up the onset of arthritis. So let's stop cutting this stuff out and instead use these biologic agents to help actually heal the tissues. So interventional orthopedics uh, represents a new uh, medical specialty. Um, these invasive surgeries will hopefully be replaced by more precise image guided needle based procedures. Uh, and as you can see on this slide, we use uh, different types of equipment, including ultrasound guidance and x-ray or fluoroscopic guidance to help put those uh, needles right where they need to be. So the treatment is uh, absolutely accurate. Our goal is to use less invasive procedures to avoid more invasive surgeries. So there's different levels of accuracy when you're talking about injection type treatments. About 50% of doctors, when they're doing uh, injections, they do their injections blind. So they can't really see where they're putting that needle or where things are being placed in that joint or around the joint or wherever they're trying to get it to. Uh, there's low accuracy guidance, uh, which may be different uh, types of um, imaging or landmark based guidance. Uh, about the other 45% of doctors will do that. And then there's more precision guided, uh, which is which includes sort of the top tier of the 5% of doctors that use uh, more precise ultrasound guided treatments to get those injections directly where they need to be within those tissues or fascial layers or around nerves. Uh, so within the shoulder, there's lots of different common pathologies that people seek out treatment for, uh, whether that be for surgery or um, uh, injection type or, or management type issues. The top four of those are probably uh, rotator cuff injuries, which are very common within the community. Uh, lots of people experience either tearing or just uh, tendon related issues that create pain. There's arthritis, usually within the shoulder joint uh, that just breaks down over time. Labral tears, which may come from simple things like fall injuries or lifting injuries or sports related injuries as well. And then there can be things like bicep tendonitis and other things that uh, maybe are not as common, but do affect the shoulder the same way. Uh, all of these different issues are very treatable with uh, PRP or stem cell based treatments. Uh, within the rotator cuff, looking at even full thickness tears that are up to about a centimeter and a half uh, large, there's actually very favorable outcomes with the stem cell procedures and appropriate bracing and physical therapy after the treatment. For osteoarthritis, uh, glenohumeral osteoarthritis, which is basically the ball and socket joint of the shoulder, uh, or acromioclavicular arthritis, which is a, a little smaller joint in the top part of the shoulder. Again, very favorable outcomes uh, with platelet-based and stem cell-based treatments for those two issues, depending on the extent of the degeneration. For labral tears, I've treated this uh, very commonly more recently uh, in both athletes and in just the general population uh, with platelet-based treatments and stem cell-based treatments. There's very favorable outcomes with this. Uh, and also with uh, bicep tendonitis, um, injecting uh, stem cells and platelets into the actual tendons itself uh, and into the surrounding structures actually helps to alleviate this very, very well. So when we're looking at shoulder related injections, uh, this is using an x-ray guidance to actually place this needle. Uh, the first picture you can see here with just the dark line is where the needle actually enters the joint. And we inject a little bit of contrast dye into the joint to make sure we're in the right place. 
So that dark line you can see at first there is the actual injection end of the joint. So somebody that has joint related shoulder pain, that's the type of injection approach that we would use to treat that. The needle then gets redirected a little bit more north uh, and you can see there's a small triangular area that that needle starts to inject across the top part of the shoulder. That's the actual labrum. So people that have a slap related tear uh, or a labral injury from the bicep tendon, uh, that's the type of injection uh, that we would do to help to treat that. That's a very precise injection right onto the top of the socket joint in the shoulder. Uh, it takes an expert hand to get that needle right where it needs to be and to put that uh, to put that treatment directly into the tissue uh, that way. Uh, this you can see, this is a, a ultrasound guided image from an actual rotator cuff uh, injection. This would be the top part of the rotator cuff. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the needle gets placed directly. The, the tear is actually outlined by those two red lines. Uh, and you can see the needle coming in from the left side of the screen and being placed directly into that tear uh, and the cells get delivered right into the actual tear and into the surrounding tissues as well. This is a, a post-regenic stem cell um, uh, comparison image uh, from a five-month study uh, of, an, of a stem cell treatment for a rotator cuff. On the left picture, you can see uh, that red arrow uh, indicates where the top part of the rotator cuff is completely torn. Uh, and slightly retracted a little bit. And you can see a lot of that white fluid coming up from inside the joint uh, and actually spreading all around the area where that tear is allowing that fluid to escape from the joint. After the stem cell treatment with the procedure on the right, you can see where that rotator cuff has completely reformed over the top part of the shoulder. Uh, number one, just allowing for, um, you know, complete muscle and tendon reattachment there, but also you don't see that same bright white signal coming up out of the joint and stemming into the surrounding tissues. That's because that rotator cuff has healed and actually sealed off that, uh, that fluid from coming out of the joint after the treatment. So the results you can expect are overall less pain, uh, improvements in function, improvements in mood because nobody really feels very good when they're in pain, hopefully getting you off of any pain medications, whether that's chronic anti-inflammatories or uh, narcotic medications, and then back to the preferred and active lifestyle that you want uh, more quickly than surgery. So let's talk a little bit about the Regenex differences uh, in, and why they're important. Uh, so we'll start with the specialists. And it's important to see somebody that's highly specialized in their field because you want a doctor that's an expert in musculoskeletal care and has more training in this specialty than the other doctors uh, or other practitioners uh, in the community. Uh, we only have physicians here at Regenex Pittsburgh. Um, we don't use, uh, we don't allow nurse, nurse practitioners or physician's assistants to do the, uh, the treatments. So everything that you're getting done is performed by a, a highly trained medical specialist. So it means that you get an expert physician with the knowledge and skills and experience to do the actual treatment effectively and precisely. You don't have a dabbler, uh, somebody that just uh, trained on how to do injections over a weekend course or something like that. Um, and for you, that means that the right doctor can make the right diagnosis and provide the right treatment. And that's going to be key in terms of the success of the treatment and the outcome. The next big difference is the cell source. It's important because you want something that's safe, viable, and compliant with anything uh, that the FDA, uh, with any of the regulations that the FDA puts in place. So you're only getting your bone marrow cells that are alive and properly dosed. It also means that you get the most researched uh, procedures uh, with the best peace of mind, the best results, and the best value of what we're offering. Harvesting, uh, differences here that are important. We're able to get the most living viable cells from your body. Uh, these cells come from the bone marrow. Uh, the way that we actually do the procedures gives us uh, sample sizes that allow for uh, very large numbers of stem cells. Uh, we actually do viability counts within the clinic lab. So we know how viable the stem cells are when we take them out of your body. 
uh, and we know that you're getting the highest dose of cells possible that are harvested using the best technique with the least amount of pain. We know how to extract the most cells from your body and you receive the maximum dose for the greatest possible success. Uh, one of the other big differences is the holistic approach that we use to your care. We're not just looking at the joint that's specifically uh, problematic for you. We're also looking up and down the chain to check things like structure, articulation, how the nerves and muscles affect what's going on with those joints and the symmetry. How does one side affect the other um, and how do things balance out? Uh, this is a very important concept uh, when you're looking at doing successful regenerative treatments because if you put, I usually use the analogy of uh, replacing a tire on a car. If you put a new tire on a car and you don't balance and align it appropriately, you're going to wear it down in the same way. So if there's problems in other places, uh, that may also affect what's happening with the joint uh, and needs to be addressed for the best outcomes. So as far as Regenex safety, uh, Regenex has published one of the largest safety papers in the world uh, related to their procedure and to stem cell uh, treatments. Um, the safety reports basically are that the, the procedure is safe. There's a very, very low potential for any complications or negative, uh, negative uh, impacts. The most common uh, discomfort that people felt was just pain at the injection site. That was the most common uh, uh, negative outcome that people happened, that people had and reported in the safety paper. And this was in a sample size of over 2000 patients. The next thing is who can you trust? Um, there's a lot of uh, different practitioners not just around Pittsburgh, but also all over the country that are offering treatments with amniotic or placental or umbilical cord uh, blood or quote unquote stem cell procedures. But these, proce these uh, injection options actually contain no live stem cells. There's never been a third party study that has ever shown that these products actually grow or culture any live stem cell cultures. And you can see in the uh, picture that I've placed here, uh, these on these samples on the left were bone marrow stem were bone marrow samples taken from patients between the ages of 50 and 70. Uh, and then these were grown uh, in a lab. And the other samples on the right were taken from what was considered to be amniotic or umbilical uh, stem cells from a product called Livion Pure, uh, which actually grew no stem cell colonies at all uh, in any of the samples that were compared. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, bad information that, you know, people are getting told that after a certain age, your stem cells are too old. Uh, that's not true based on peer reviewed published data. Uh, what we've seen is that older patients using their own stem cells had no better or worse outcomes than younger patients. In fact, in a lot of my older patients, I actually see better uh, stem cell counts and better viability within the stem cells than patients that are even in their 30s and 40s. So it's not a it's not a true comparison that your ever that your stem cells become too old uh, to use as you age. And their stem cell products actually the stem cell products that uh, people were pushing when they say that the stem cells are too old actually contain only dead cells uh, or no cells at all. So red flags that when you want to look at when you're uh, considering different treatment options and different treatment clinics, um, if there's a, a heavy emphasis on discounting or financing, uh, that usually uh, indicates that there may be uh, some secondary gain that they're looking at rather than just the actual integrity of the procedure. Uh, if they tout the procedure as a magic cure-all, I've heard uh, reports of some clinics claiming that they can treat multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's uh, and cerebral palsy and some of these other uh, diseases. Um, but, you know, we stay in our lane. We know that we're good at musculoskeletal medicine and orthopedic medicine, and we're not going to claim to uh, to be able to cure anything and everything under the sun. Uh, if they say that everybody is a candidate, uh, that should be a red flag. You know, we evaluate and uh, discuss all of our treatment options with patients individually. 
uh, and we're going to rate your candidacy, candidacy based on how we feel we can treat you. If there's something that we feel that may not be able to be treated, then we're going to let you know. But in most cases, it's very rare that it can't be. But still, there are things that we, uh, that we look at very closely. Uh, if anybody's touting amniotic or placental or cord blood procedures and calling it a, quote, stem cell treatment, uh, that's a big red flag because there are actually no live stem cells in any of those treatments. Uh, and then there's fat tissue treatment options. Um, in order to actually extract stem cells from fat, there's a, there's a different type of procedure that you have to apply to the fat cells to extract those stem cells. Um, and that procedure is actually uh, outright illegal in the United States uh, and deemed illegal by the uh, FDA. So when we're talking about uh, how we actually approach these treatments, uh, there's differences in between stem cells and PRP treatments in terms of how the procedures are performed and how you actually present to the clinic to do them. So the typical visit flow for a platelet-based treatment or a PRP-based treatment is their initial visit's probably gonna be about an hour. Uh, we'll, come, we'll come in, we'll do a full physical exam, we'll do a few full review of imaging if you have it and everything. Uh, at the next treatment, uh, you'll actually have the blood drawn and the injection will be done on the same day. Um, the physical therapy will usually start about a week after the treatment, depending on any residual inflammation or soreness. Um, and then we usually do follow-ups at about one, three, six, and 12 months uh, to monitor the outcomes. With stem cell treatments, the, uh, the expectations are a little bit different. Uh, there's actually a, a several step process that goes into the stem cell treatments. And that whole process usually takes place over the course of about a week. Um, so there's three different appointments. The first appointment is going to be a prolotherapy appointment. Appointment two is going to be the actual platelet and stem cell injections. Uh, the stem cells will be drawn from an area on the backside of the pelvis here called the iliac crest uh, and will be re-injected that same day at that second appointment. The third appointment will be a platelet-based treatment, uh, which will be similar to a PRP treatment where we actually harvest the, we actually take the blood and do the reinjection on the same day. So in terms of the stem cell treatment, your first visit again is gonna be about an hour. Same thing we're gonna look at, uh, you know, your physical exam, we'll look at your history, we'll look at all your imaging if you have any. Uh, we may do some ultrasound imaging on our own in the office. Um, the second, uh, once we decide what we're going to do, then we go into the course of the actual one, two, and three day treatments where we'll do the uh, till the soil, which is basically the uh, prolotherapy treatment, uh, planting the seeds, which is the stem cell extraction and then re injection. And then we'll fertilize the seeds. That's when we do the uh, PRP based treatment on the third day. Physical therapy is usually going to start about a week uh, again after that treatment. Um, and again, follow up at one, three, six, and 12 months to monitor progress. So after the treatments, uh, I have most people um, going through physical therapy. Uh, I think this is very important in terms of patients' outcomes, uh, just in terms of strength and stability of the joint. Um, usually, though, the physical therapy that's required after your stem cell treatment is about 60% less than the physical, ther sur uh, sorry, physical therapy that you would go to after surgery. Uh, focus is similar on improving motion, joint stability, and overall strength, both up and down the chain. Um, usually it's in person. Uh, some uh, things I'll, you'll have to do yourself at home, home exercise programs uh, as you know, directed by the physical therapist. Um, and then if there's any questions about anything with the uh, progress or just uh, in general about the procedure, uh, referring providers are available for questions from the physical therapist. So who is this treatment for? Um, the treatment's for people that want to avoid surgery, uh, particularly in the shoulder, people that want to avoid long down times after rotator cuff repairs uh, or losing any function that may be coming from uh, shoulder replacements or other um, uh, surgeries. They want to keep all their parts so people don't want to have things cut out and replaced with metal uh, you know, that's very disconcerting for a lot of patients. 
They don't want to have the lengthy downtime like I talked about. People don't want drugs. They don't want to have to deal with uh, narcotic pain medications after surgery or being on long-term medications if they don't have surgery. Um, people may have had a failed surgery before. So this is a great option uh, to be treated and not have to do anything more surgery related uh, if pain is still a problem. Or maybe patients know someone that had a bad outcome from surgery. This is a good way to avoid surgery completely. Some people may just have medical contraindications for surgery. Uh, you know, they may be too old or may not be able to tolerate the anesthesia. Uh, these procedures are great for people that may not be good surgical candidates. Uh, also on the opposite end, people may be too young for surgery. Uh, if you have a lot of hip issues and you're in your thirties or forties and you don't wanna have to go for uh, a, a hip replacement or a knee replacement so early, uh, these are great options for that in terms of uh, long-term um, uh, repair and recovery treatments. So in terms of cost, uh, here's some of the ways that the, here's some of the differences. Um, as far as uh, prolotherapy goes, uh, that's usually sort of the, the, the initial sort of low end of the totem pole in terms of the uh, treatment cost. PRP starts to get a little bit more, uh, the placement-based treatments for the spine, um, a little a bit higher in price and then the stem cell treatments are probably your highest uh, price treatments. Um, insurance, usual, insurance in terms of what we do will cover your consultations, it'll cover your follow-ups, it'll cover your any diagnostics, so any additional imaging that we might order or lab work. Uh, also any bracing and physical therapy would also be included in, in that coverage. Insurance does not cover anything related to the regenerative aspects of these treatments. So prolotherapy, PRP, uh, platelet treatments, uh, or stem cells. But if you look at uh, co-pays and deductibles uh, in terms of your more traditional surgeries, you may actually be paying more uh, with undergoing those traditional orthopedic surgeries than you would uh, um, performing the regenerative treatment because you're looking at just ongoing um, uh, co-pays with longer term physical therapy, routine follow-ups, and then your deductibles for surgery, depending on your insur insurance plan may be extremely high. Again, we're using customized treatment plans that have a wide range uh, of pricing. Um, so again, we're gonna recommend what we think is gonna be the best for you uh, in terms of what you have going on. Uh, some additional information on insurance coverage. We're now looking into hopefully uh, becoming more affiliated with some self-funded employers uh, so that patients that are employees of those companies may be able to have some additional coverage uh, for us directly. Uh, and we're starting the process of building that a little bit more around the Pittsburgh area. Uh, so hopefully as we, uh, as we get more involved with this, there'll be more uh, companies around that would like to uh, take us on as a provider for their employees. So also uh, following the procedures, you know, we'll recommend the advanced nutritional supplement bundle. Um, all of these different supplements have great uh, properties in terms of joint recovery and joint health. Uh, the advanced stem cell support formula uh, has a lot of different vitamins and supplement combinations that help with muscle recovery uh, and joint support. Uh, the omega-3 fish oil uh, also helps with joint lubrication and cartilage health. Uh, and the turmeric and cucurbit complex uh, is very helpful in terms of um, alleviating inflammation and also has excellent systemic inflammatory uh, re reduction effects. So these are our different offices uh, around the Pittsburgh area. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, close to any of these offices, um, usually we'll see uh, consults in the main office at Pittsburgh, but I also see consults in, uh, in Bridgeville um, as well. Uh, but any of these other offices are also uh, able to see patients and, and do follow-ups. So I told you guys there was going to be a promotion, uh, a 2020 promotion uh, that was coming out at the end of this seminar. So thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you are one of the first 20 attendees of this conference to call the office and schedule a new patient evaluation, uh, you're going to receive the following. You'll receive a free Regenex supplement package. That's $150 value. Uh, it's gonna have all of the uh, uh, supplements that I just talked about, the liquid eight in one supplement, the omega-3 fish oil and the turmeric cucurbit complex. 
Um, you'll also uh, have the potential to save up to $1,000 off of a Regen X stem cell procedure. Um, so that's a, a huge savings if we're, uh, if we're considering doing a stem cell procedure. Uh, so if you're interested uh, and you uh, are thinking about doing this and you're thinking about getting evaluation, now is the time. Be one of the first 20 people uh, to call and schedule with any of us, whether it's myself, Dr. Sally, or Dr. Adelsheimer, or Dr. Lieber. Uh, we'd be happy to get you in uh, and, uh, and let you know what we think we can do. So the next step for you uh, should be uh, calling our contact, Sarah Ferlin, uh, to schedule an in-house consultation or a phone consultation. The number to call is 412-963-6480, and you'll be directed uh, into the Regenex line to get scheduled um, and uh, get all the information to us. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up to any questions um that you may have give me one second here so i have one question that's already kind of been a been asked here uh it says regarding the harvesting of the stem cells from the hip uh i had a total hip replacement two years back what, if any, complications does this present? I am having shoulder issues. Thanks. Um, well, what I can tell you is when we do the harvesting of the stem cells, uh, we don't. So if you've had a hip replacement, where we actually extract the stem cells from, like I said, is called the iliac crest. Uh, so it's actually away from the spine. It's away from the hip joint. The only area that actually or the only things that actually cover that are basically fat tissue and butt muscle. So we're not going to be anywhere near uh, your hip replacement or your actual hip joint. So any spinal surgeries or any hip surgeries or anything like that uh, won't uh, affect anything that we do with the stem cell uh, with the stem cell draw. Uh, do you accept uh, workers' comp if approved? Um, we usually usually these procedures are not covered by insurance or workers' comp insurance. Um, you know, if, if you come in, uh, we, like I said, we can talk about, uh, what options we have, um, and we can, you know, we can talk about how we can, uh, work with you, uh, to see what we can do. But usually, usually these procedures are not covered by, uh, by insurances. We have had some successes with workers' comp, but that's, there's, there's never a guarantee with that. Um, so, you know, usually we just say that, that we don't have, a, we don't have coverage for it. Uh, for shoulder pain, do you order an MRI? Uh, yeah, if we feel like we need it, we can order an MRI. Um, you know, I also like to sometimes do ultrasound guided uh, um, evaluations in the office uh, when we're actually looking at the shoulder, uh, because sometimes the ultrasound can actually answer more questions for me than the MRI. If you have an MRI, you're welcome to bring it. Uh, we can review it. If we feel like we need an updated MRI, we could certainly do that too if there's a question about something that we, uh, that we may be seeing. Um, so we'll talk about that depending on uh, how the examination goes and, and what we need to do. Uh, how painful is the bone platelet extraction? Uh, I don't necessarily know if I, if I understand the question, um, but I can tell you this, if we're doing a platelet treatment, uh, that actually comes just from a blood draw, just like your, a normal lab-based uh, blood draw, like if you were getting lab work done. So that is very uh, minimal pain. Uh, as far as like we're, if we're doing like a bone marrow extraction for stem cells, uh, what most patients tell me is that there's very little discomfort with that, with that uh, procedure. Uh, basically, it's just a big pinch uh, and just some pressure when we're actually extracting the stem cells. But most patients tolerate it very, very well, and very few people have a lot of pain at all uh, with the actual procedure. Uh, is ultrasound covered by insurance? Uh, yes, the ultrasound, um, the ultrasound, both if we're do if we're using it for uh, injections and if we're using it to actually just look at the joints, yes, that's covered. Um, what is the mechanism? 
pathology of stem cell treatment, will it grow more meniscus? Um, it depends on what your actual issue is. So, you know, we can talk about that a little bit more specifically, you know, depending on what your actual injury is. If, if there is a meniscus tear, depending on the extent of it, uh, it can definitely regrow some of the meniscus tissue. Uh, there are certain things that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sort of address depending on what the different problems are that we're, that we're treating. Uh, I had a bone spur removed from my shoulder area. Should I bring those picks from the procedure into my evaluation appointment? Uh, you don't have to, um, you know, I, I know sort of what happens when they do those bone spur removals. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a surgeon. So sometimes looking at uh, arthroscopic pictures uh, isn't always the best information for me, but um, you know, we'll, we'll still do the evaluation to see what's going on after the, uh, this from the surgery. Uh, but you no, know, you don't have to bring those pictures in usually. Uh, does the knee joint need to have an ACL replaced before the joint can have treatment? Um, the meniscus if destroyed and the bones look, yeah. So you don't, if you're already at a point where there's a, uh, there's a problem with the, um, with the joint in terms of arthritis, uh, you don't, most surgeons are not going to do an ACL repair or reconstruction at that point anyway, um, because there's already a lot of destructive arthritis. Um, so again, we'll have, you don't need to have an ACL repair or anything before we do treatment, but we can talk about that a little bit more directly if we, if we see you. Um, you speak mostly about shoulders and knees. Can you speak to the efficacy of the treatment on the ankle? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the webinar today was mostly based on, on shoulder and, and knee related issues. Uh, we have had excellent results with the ankle as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd say there's definite e efficacy, definitely good outcomes, favorable outcomes for the ankle uh, in most cases. How do you handle post-treatment care for patients coming from Canada? Well, um, in most cases, post-treatment care uh, is usually, you know, we do the procedure um, and, and usually the physical therapy happens, you know, closer to home. So all of the physical therapy that you do, uh, you know, can, can be done uh, closer to home in Canada. Uh, if, we're, if we're doing, if we're talking about issues where you would need to follow up, like if there's ongoing pain or if there's anything that we need to look at directly, that may be something that we have to do a more focused uh, examination on. Luckily, in times of COVID, now we can, uh, we can actually do some telemedicine-based uh, treatment and evaluation. So sometimes a lot, a lot of things we can do um, through that route. But if there is something that we definitely need to address more directly, then we'll have to talk about follow-up uh, around that. So that's something that we can address if we, if we have an issue. Can you discuss generally who would not be a candidate for any of the treatments you've discussed? What conditions would you consider which would lead to not be a viable candidate? Uh, it's very rare that people are not candidates for these procedures. Uh, even people that have end-stage arthritis are, not, are still considered good candidates. Um, you know, like I said, with rotator cuff injuries, um, sometimes the extent of that rotator cuff injury may prevent us from being able to actually uh, successfully have a regenerative uh, treatment done. Um, but, you know, everybody is usually a candidate for these procedures in some fashion. Uh, it's very rare that I, I tell people that they're, that they're too far gone or that they have something that we can't address. Will this treatment also assist with spinal cervical disc degenerative issues, disc herniations, yes. So we do a lot of spine treatments for disc degeneration, both in the neck and in the low back. Um, so we treat those, uh, those areas very commonly, yes. I think I, think I have, I think I addressed everybody's questions, um, which is great. These are great questions. Uh, if anybody has, any other questions, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, if nobody else has any questions, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out tonight and, and listening. I appreciate all the great questions. Um, I hope this information was helpful for you. 
Uh, like I said, you know, give our office a call, um, you know, set up a new evaluation. Uh, oh, a couple more questions coming across here. The knee with arthritis will stem cell regrow cartilage. It depends on the extent of the arthritis. Um, you know, it, it, stem cells don't necessarily regrow cartilage if there's no cartilage there to regrow, but the mechanism is actually a little bit different when we're talking about end stage arthritis. Like I said, that build up and breakdown outweighs each other. So are the stem cell procedures that we're doing going to regrow you a 25 year old knee? No, I would never claim that it would do that, but the stem cells help to actually protect the joint where the breakdown is happening and stop that, uh, that pain process from, from being a problem. And it also uh, helps to stimulate those, those chemicals in the actual joint to give you back that buildup process so that the pain in the joint gets less and less and less uh, as that recovery process happens. Okay, great. Thanks again, you guys. Uh, you know, if, if there's any questions uh, beyond this, um, can you assess patient viability without a physical exam? Uh, we will always usually need to do a physical exam in some fashion. Uh, so, you know, there's ways to kind of go about that uh, through telemedicine or through in-person examination. Um, but uh, yeah, we always do a physical exam uh, uh, before we do these procedures. So um, if there's any more questions beyond this, I'm just gonna have you guys uh, give us a call. Uh, Kim or Sarah are available um, to help with any answering any questions that you may have, and also with getting you scheduled for uh, new uh, patient evaluations. Um, thanks again for listening. And uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from some of you guys soon. Have a great night and happy holidays. And uh, thanks again.